Greetings and welcome to Yarn Inspirations. I'm Mary Beth Temple for Hooked for Life, and in this video, we're going to take a closer look at the King Me Crochet Footstool. Now, you can put your feet on it, or you could play checkers on it, and you're going to make it out of Bernat Maker Home Deck. You're going to need three balls of a light color and two balls of a dark. We used cream and black. You're also going to need a crochet hook, size USL 11 or 8 millimeter, or of course, size needed to obtain gauge and a 14 inch cubed purchased footstool. Now click on the link below to download the free pattern. And while you're down there, please click on the various social media links to check out what we're doing. And if you'd like us to see what you're doing, please use hashtag Yarnspirations. Let's get started by learning the split half double crochet. Let's first take a look at the notes. It says to join new color, work to last loops on hook of previous color, yarn over hook with new color, draw through remaining loops and proceed with the new color. So I do say this all the time here on Yarn Inspirations videos and the way I say it is the last yarn over of the last stitch of the old color is made with the new color. And you're going to see that when I do it all on camera. Then it says carry color when not in use loosely across wrong side top of row and work stitches around it being sure to maintain gauge. Cheating yarn to the wrong side will keep the color work on the right side clean and help define the checkered board effect. So let's take a look at what we mean by that. So here is the right side of the work. So when I change from this color to this color, I've done my last stitch in uh, what is my A color and I'm stitching across. My, my A color is behind it. So this is the wrong side of the work. Can you see that the yarn is traveling across? And this is what we mean by cheat it to the wrong side. So this is my wrong side. You could just leave it in the middle and sort of stitch over it. But if you cheat it towards the back, then you're far less likely to see it because when we stitch all our pieces together, this is going to be up against the foam cube and is not going to be where people can see it. And then while we have the sample out, let's take a much closer look at the split half double crochet, which we're going to learn in a few minutes and see how instead of working in a stitch like we normally would, we're working between the legs of the stitch below. And once again, I'm going to do that on camera, but I want you to get a real close look and see what it is meant to look like. Because the thing with this stitch is if you mess it up, you can tell pretty much instantly. So let's get going with our chain. I, of course, am making a smaller swatch than you will piece of your footstool. We are making a side piece. Note that it says make five pieces alike, noting that the bottom of the footstool cover is left open. So you're going to make five of these exactly the same. Uh, with B, chain 35. I have chained fewer stitches than that because I have a smaller swatch. And now the first row was a wrong side row. It says half double crochet in second chain from hook. So that's one, two. And as you all know from watching my videos, I like to work in the back or bump of the chain rather than the front or the V because I think it leaves a neater edging and we're going to need that later when we have to stitch all these pieces together. Then it says half double crochet in each of next four chain. So that's one, two, three, Or now this is my last stitch in my old color. So I'm going to go ahead and join my new color with that last yarn over on the last stitch of the old color with the new color. And this is the first time I'm adding this color. So I'm going to pull up a fold four to six inches from the cut end and just do my yarn over there. I'm not going to tie a knot or anything like that. When I weave in my ends later, that will make things nice and tight. So that was my, uh, when it said half double crochet in each of next four, that was my fourth. Now it says with A, half double crochet in each of next four chains. So I'm going to get this tail out of my way and I'm going to stitch over the other color because I wanted to be there when I need it. So we're going to go one, I'm going through the bump of the chain and also the yarn that I'm bringing across, one, Two, 
two. Remember, under the bump of the chain and also under that yarn that I'm bringing across. Four, and I'm only going to do four in this color, and so my last yarn over is going to be in the new color. So there it is. It's waiting for me because I crocheted over it and I brought it across. All right. Now it says with B, half double crochet in each of next four chains. So now I'm going to bring this yarn across and I'm going to give this a little tug. I don't want it to be so loosey goosey that it leaves a big hole in the stitch, but I don't want to pull it super tight or my work is going to scrunch up in an unattractive manner. So that's one, Remember, under the bump and under that yarn that you're bringing across, two, three, four, that's my fourth one, so that last yarn over is going to be in the new color. Now you are going to, with A, half double crochet in each of next four chain and repeat that to the last chain, half double crochet in the last chain. So I'm coming up on the end of my swatch. So here's my next stitch. There are the two legs of the stitch. There's one, there's the other. I want to go between the legs, yarn over and pull it up through the stitch, yarn over, pull through three. Yarn over, find the two legs of the next stitch. Now I will say it is slightly fiddly on the first row. It is so much easier on the subsequent rows. But the first row where you are putting your split stitches in, it's a little bit fiddly. But you can see I just get in there with my fingers, make sure they're okay, make sure that I have two. See I have two, one, two, then I'm going under. And here's my last one in this color. So that last yarn over, I'm going to pull up the yarn because it's waiting for me. Get that just the least little bit of a tug. So once again, you know how we cheated it towards the back? So you can kind of see it a little bit there, but you can see it way more in the back. And that's what we're doing. We're cheating the yarn that we're not using towards the wrong side. So I have my last stitch in that color going on. So my yarn over is going to be with the new color. And the yarn was waiting for me right there because I worked over it while I was stitching before. So let's move forward, yarn over. And now we're going to have four in a row and we're going to work over this color. And then once again, we're going to make sure that we split the legs of that half double crochet. Now I'm going to complete working like this all the way to the end of the row following that chart. And then I want you to take a look at the next row because it's the same stitch, but I want you to see and believe <laughs> that it's a little more simple after that first split row is completed. Coming up to the last stitch in this color. You see what I mean about how much easier it is to see how to put the hook between the legs on the subsequent rows, it's just they line up more neatly and it's much easier to see. And I'm doing that last yarn over with the new color. Moving on to the next stitch. And I'm going to cheat the yarn that I'm stitching over towards the wrong side and this is the this is a wrong side row. See how much easier they are to see that's right there. Now so I'm going to go ahead and finish my row and you are going to follow the chart and finish your rows and make five pieces exactly the same. And then I want to talk for a second about assembly and then about how to fold the pouch. I decided to swing back in and remind you that when you are changing color at the end of a row, it's still that last yarn over of the last stitch is in the new color. Then you're going to turn your work and then you're going to chain one in the new color 
and then do your first split stitch. And in this case, you're going to have to bring over the yarn that you were just working with. You're going to single crochet the pieces together as is shown in the photo, but we want the seams to be visible. So you're going to match the pieces up with the wrong sides together and simply single crochet through all the thicknesses at once to give you a seam that is both durable and attractive. This is more of an art than a science. If it gets, uh, if it pulls too tightly, you do not have enough single crochets and you may have to put in some extras. If it seems loosey goosey, then you've probably done too many and we'll have to go back and make fewer. But this is one of those, once you get one of the side seams done, you can count how many stitches that you're happy with and use that same number of stitches to join the other sides together. And then you're going to go all the way around the top. You may also notice I've lined it up so that I don't have two squares the same color next to each other. I want my light, my dark, and then light, dark, etc. So you'll orient your uh, rectangles, your side pieces, in that direction. And then as I said, single crochet the top on all the way around. Then you're going to make your single crochet pouch and I'm going to show you how to fold that up. To make the pouch, you are simply going to work a rectangle of single crochet and then fold it as shown as the diagram. It shows you the foundation chain meeting the last row. In case you're just a, a little confused, it's just a matter of folding the two edges in and seaming along the top and the bottom so that you have your opening in which to put your pieces. So thank you so much for joining me for the King Me Crochet Footstool. I'm Mary Beth Temple for Hooked for Life. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel for fresh content weekly on knitting, crocheting, and other yarny stuff. While you're down there, click the links to follow us on the various social media platforms. And if you'd like us to see what you're up to, use hashtag Yarnspirations in your work so we can check it out.